Good afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, I want to do kind of a fun video today. At least some people uh, find them fun. I just want to do a gear rundown. Uh, what's Dwayne riding these days? What, what gear am I using? We only got two weeks of school left for the year. And uh, one of the things Mama and I want to do over the winter is we want to do a lot of riding. And uh, so what is my current gear set up? and uh, what am i using in particular and why and i, I just want to run over it get a lot of students come through the school and they're new to gear and they're trying to figure their way out so i just want to give some options and some ideas and lay some stuff out there so we got old mouse out and we got him all tacked up so i'm just going to start from the nose and work my way back all right so we'll start with a head stall now the head stall i'm using is one that i used and talked about the last video with uh, Sweet Jane. Uh, it's Buckaroo Leather made it, and I he makes all my tack now. I get everything from him. Um, it's just, it's good heavy Herman Oak leather, and I like the, the teardrop here on the leather, just kind of gives it a little bit of punchy flavor. One thing I really like about these, I order these, is these buckles. Now, if you're learning, and you're trying to figure out bits, and trying to figure stuff out, um, it's cheaper to have one head stall and a number of different bits. If you think the bit you're using isn't working and you want to try a different bit, uh, these buckles make the swap out of the bit super easy. And so I just, I really like them. A lot of the folks have come through here. They've got left here and gone and got on his website and ordered these head stalls. And so this is what I use. Now I'm using a makate. The makate, this is one piece of rope that's about 21 feet long. This one's made out of horse hair. Okay, I'm gonna step in front of the camera and come back over here. The advantage of this is, is you have a loop rein which comes through these slobber straps and then comes up and so you've got a lead rope that ties off. Now I think I got this off of eBay like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, this one is tail hair. They make them out of mane hair or tail hair. The tail hair is a lot more coarse, a lot rougher. They're really scratchy, but they soften up over years and over time. So I usually run uh, eight foot heavy leather split reins, but I've been riding that little Palomino a lot. And uh, she's so short that my split reins were dragging the ground about that long and she kept stepping on them. And so I went and put this rig on it. And uh, the other thing I like about this, remember when we're training horses, the important thing is our communication has to be very simple and very clear. And so when I'm up on the back of a horse and I've got them light and easy in the mouth and I'm starting to teach them the neck rein, when I lay this horse hair on their neck, they can definitely feel it. It doesn't irritate them, it's not pokey or anything. I mean, he's standing here half asleep and I'm laying on his neck. But if I'm riding them, it just gives me a very clear, very simple, definite uh, signal for them. Uh, the bit I'm using is a Jeremiah Watt snaffle bit. Um, and uh, I've got three or four of these on different head stalls. These are what I use on just about everything. I mean, Mouse here is the most broke horse on the place. He's got the best handle. Uh, I could ride him in anything, but I still ride him in this D-ring snaffle 99% of the time. Um, I like these D-ring snaffles because they're sweet iron, which the horses prefer the taste over that, over something more chrome or stainless steel. Um, and sweet iron is just cold rolled steel. They got copper inlays in it, which helps promote salivation, so it helps the horse keep the mouth um, with saliva, keep it uh, so it's lubricated and they're nice and heavy so again we're concerned about that very simple very clear signal so with this here if i give him a little signal if i'm on his back or down here and i give a little signal and he gives what i want and i drop it i give the release these coupled with that heavy d-ring snavel gives him a very clear there's no question okay i did what he wanted and he gave me my release so this is my normal setup for most of the riding that i do Okay, we go back here, we'll move on back. Breast collar, now if you've been watching many of my videos, you know I don't, I don't use a breast collar all the time. 
But if we start hitting a lot of long trails, I'll go ahead and use one in case we start hitting some hills and stuff. Um, and again, this one was made by John, Buckaroo Leather. I called him and I asked specifically for this one. I'm gonna turn around here so mama can see the front. Now this is what's called a pulling collar. If you'll notice, these come up high on the saddle and where a lot of breast collars come here across the chest, this one comes up along the shoulders. Now I like this because it, it stays off his shoulders and frees up his shoulders and uh, we're not worried about getting up in his wind or anything. And, uh, and so I like these. The other reason I asked specifically for this one, you'll notice down here, there's no hardware. A lot of them, they'll have a ring and it'd be leather and leather. And these are all different places where the leather comes in to the ring. And sometimes you have to have hardware, of course, but when I don't have to have it, I prefer to eliminate it on my gear. Uh, if I can. So this is just a really heavy, again, it's Herman Oak leather. It's uh, really heavy, very solid, very well made, and uh, it'll last forever. This is the second, this is the third one of these breast collars I've got from him over the years. Um, so when I use a breast collar, this is what I use. We move on back. Um, saddle pad, $60, diamond wool. Okay, you don't need, and I've got a couple videos covering that. I'm not gonna go over it. You don't need a $300 saddle pad with, with gel in it and, and a hospital fleece and all that stuff. Uh, that's a whole nother subject. But I bought, I've got six or seven of these exact pads. All my horses, all my saddles, they all use the exact same pad. Uh, the saddle, the saddle is a uh, S.A. Brown. Um, out of Elko, Nevada. I just picked this up not too long back, got it used. Scott has uh, been making saddles for a lot of years and he's, he's well known in the saddle making industry. Uh, it's a good saddle. My cinch is a mohair cinch. Um, I prefer mohair to all other materials. I like to have as much natural material against the skin of my horse as I can. Mohair lasts long, uh, a long time and uh, I never have sore horses. I never have galded horses, and uh, and these are what I prefer. This is this is what I use. Um, the stirrups are Monells brass bound five inch Monells. They're pretty beat up, um, busting through Aspen deadfalls, moving cattle in Colorado. Kind of took a chunk out of them, but I I like these. You don't have to buy the three hundred dollar ones. I got these somewhere I don't know where out of Colorado, and they were like I don't know. $90 or something. So if you look around, um, you can find a good pair. Now I am running buck and rolls right now on here. I had a horse I was working, I was going to be working uh, last week and I just rode in real confident that he was going to behave. And I put these on here, but I don't usually, I usually take them off. I don't usually run buck and rolls on a normal day to day basis. Because I find that if we leave them on there, we subconsciously start looking for them with our leg and we start using them as a crutch. And it, it will kind of, if you leave them on there, uh, it'll kind of soften your riding ability. And after a while, you're not riding your saddle so much, you're riding your bucking rolls. That's just me. Um, I do have a back cinch. Back cinch came with the saddle. I am running it on here. Uh, as you notice, I got it up against the horse's belly. We've talked about that before. If you're not going to have your back cinch touching your horse's belly, then take it off. Take it off. Its purpose is to keep the back of this saddle from coming up in adverse conditions. So if it's not touching the horse's belly, it's not even going to do its job. And if it's hanging down, it's a danger when you're going through the woods. It's a danger for sticks and debris to get in between the horse and there. Uh, create a wreck. If it's hanging very much, they can kick it a fly, get their foot hung up in there or get their foot up in it when they're getting their feet underneath them going down a steep hill. So up in there, um, I keep a pair of hobbles. My hobble, he's, he's hobble broke. Most of my horses are hobble broke. So I keep a pair of figure eight hobbles. You know, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but I think I got these from Buckaroo Leather too about 10 years ago, um, come to think of it. These are, uh, I like this style here. I don't like the kind that's got the separate cuffs that are attached together. They're big and they're hanging out and they can hang on stuff. 
good flat set that just hangs against the saddle. They're always there when you need them. I just put them on and I just leave them and I don't have to worry about it. Saddlebags, these are, I got from Big Ben Saddlery. Uh, they're just little day bags. And uh, so like I'm on a day trip, this is all I'll have on here. Uh, I don't think I got much in here right now because I'm not loaded up for a trip. Uh, maybe a small uh, first aid kit and a Leatherman tool and then I will put in it what I need based on uh, where I'm going. But they're small, they're not in the way. Uh, they do come out a bit wider, um, and, but they're not all hanging down and flapping if you kind of get speed up. And so that's, uh, so that's what I'm using there. Um, I guess that's about it. Good gear, good gear. Good gear ain't cheap, but then cheap gear ain't good, all right? So a lot of this is, is uh, there's practical reasons. There's practical reasons for everything that you have on the horse and why you have it on the horse. I was going to touch on this. Um, that throat latch on him, you want to keep that loose. If anything, I would drop that down. I was just looking at that. I would drop that down another notch. All your throat latch does is to keep this from getting pulled off for whatever reason, okay? So if you've got that pulled up snug and you ask him to flex at the pole, tip his nose in and he keeps pinching that leather throat latch, after a while he's not going to want to do that anymore. Okay, so we want to have, that needs to be loose. I can't think of anything else. Um, so anyhow, that's, that's what Dwayne's running on his horse these days. And uh, so, I hope there's a little bit there you can learn from, and, and we'll catch you guys next time.